to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we're back. Once again, it is Saturday afternoon, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And joining me tonight is the gunslinger. Hello. That's how his mommy and daddy referred to him on the birth certificate. Yes. The gunslinger that has forever shaped his future. Yeah. And I I am full of Christmas cheer this evening. Full of Christmas kombucha. I've got my (laughs) kombucha. This camera. I got my kombucha, and we are good to go. And uh, I think I want to st- open it. We just opened the podcast, but I think I want to open it with some more Christmas cheer. That's one way to open the podcast. Christmas cheer brought to you the uh, Patriot Defense Way. Yeah, there you go. I like it. Yeah. I Guns like and it. explosions. So, Mr. Gunslinger, what uh, what have you been up to lately? Just selling guns and There's nothing ammo to sell. And yeah, we, well, there's ammo. <coughs> We've actually been seeing ammo coming in. You actually have. So, yeah. you got ammo in a few times this last yeah. week, didn't you? I think, f- what, three times in a week. I and, think I walked away with like... T- Almost 300 rounds total from we got, your establishment. Um, we got a lot of ammo in, actually. I mean, we're talking like 1,000-round counts of stuff. Whoa. So I'm looking for some 380. Uh, no, yeah, we didn't get any 380. I need some 380 because I need to get my mom a Christmas present. Oh, stocking stuff. And when I saw that unicorn about a month ago, I probably should have bought it. Yeah. Because it was like... I could have bought two boxes and they would have been like 200 round packs. And I let it slip between my fingers. I was too worried about the nine millimeter. It happens. And I stared at it for quite a while. I put it under my arm and I packed it around with me for quite a while. And I just, uh, yeah, I just, I put it back and I shouldn't have put it back. Well, you know, hindsight being twenty twenty, you can't see very well. No, <laughs> I don't know. So three eighty, you do? You, do you, have you seen any three eighty come in at all? No, not li- no. I mean, like Dang we, it. I did see some thirty thirty, which is pretty rare. Yeah, I mean for lever guns, you know. But did it uh, did it get picked up pretty quick? Um, <clears throat> yes. That well, we were doing like one box per customer on that stuff because that's that's very hard to find actually. So. Well, you also had some uh, 300 blackout. I saw some 300 blackout yeah, so there. there was the 300 day. blackout. We got some of that in. A um, lot of 5.56. Five, we got That's what we got yeah, the 1,000 yeah. round packs of. So I saw I was there at your at your store, your place of business. They're not your store, but the place you work at. Yeah. And I saw a life choice be made, a big decision. Uh-oh. This gentleman was standing right there, and he picked up, he picked up, the 300 blackout picked up two boxes because you guys change your limits now. Yeah. So he picked up your two two boxes and then he noticed that there was some nine mil behind the counter. Mm-hmm. And he goes, and I'll take two, uh, whatever I take is a nine mil. And uh, I believe it was Jeremy there working. Good on him. He followed the rules and he said, uh, sir, I can only sell you two boxes of ammo total. Yeah. And he's like, What? And he's like, yeah, it's got to be one and one or two and two or you got to make the choice. And that gentleman stood there for about 10 minutes. Oh, wow. And he was weighing the decision in his life. And me and Jeremy tried to help him. And we were like, so we've been getting the nine mil in. Not me, but Jeremy. I was like, he's like, but that, 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 that 300, 300 blackout, that's more of a unicorn. Yeah. And that gentleman, he walked away with the 300 blackout. 
He it's, said it's, he, it's tough. He told me, he said, and <laughs> it's funny. He told me, he's like, you know, I've got lots of nine mil. I've got like 400 rounds at home. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, you got lots of nine mil. Yeah. <laughs> you got 400 rounds at home. Well, we ended up, um, we took one of the thousand round packs. It's all loose packs, so we can't can't sell it, you know, bullet at a time, unfortunately. Right. But um, a couple of us at the counter, we decided we were going to buy one and then we'd split it amongst ourselves. So. But we didn't all like buy the thousand round packs. We just bought one pack and divided it up between us. So, so it come in those boxes. If someone want get it, cause if someone wanted to buy two of those, could they have bought two of them? No, those we were limiting to one. <laughs> gonna, yeah. Cause that's got, a lot of ammo. You got to learn how to play the game. Man. I got 600 rounds of that thousand round stuff. And I'm looking in there and I'm just grabbing handfuls and handfuls and handfuls, transferring it over out of the box into my ammo. Cans. Yeah. And I'm like 600 rounds doesn't seem like a lot, but man, when you're grabbing yeah. it and handful at a time, there's a lot there. Yeah. Was that steel case stuff or is no, that? this was all fi- uh, 55 grain, uh, ball ammo, 193s brass. Yeah. Oh, very yep. nice. So I have, I have a bunch of green tip, bunch of steel clear very case nice. stuff, but well, I, I needed some 55 grain. So what was your, what was your ammo total for the week? I know you haven't been buying it oh, like me. Oh gosh. Um, what was your ammo total? We always go over this every podcast. So I probably, well, I bought a couple more nines. I got, uh, shoot. I probably picked up 900. Yeah. About 900 rounds. That's of different, of different stuff. I right. Mean. So I wasn't quite that successful. I think I got 300 rounds of nine mil and I ended up with 200 rounds of, 22 long rifle. I ended up with a hundred rounds, a 22, uh, is it a Gila? A yeah, Gila. Yeah. Is that how they say that? I don't know. That's, that sounds Spanish to me. And that's if anyone knows it. how to say that, let me know. Is it a Gila or a Guila? I, I mean, I think it's Spanish. So that's it's got a I picture mean. of like a little animal on it too. A like an eagle or something. Like a bird. No, it's yeah. not an eagle. It's, it's not an eagle. Oh, I thought, I don't know. It's a freaking sparrow or something. Maybe it's a chupacabra. A chupacabra. El chupacabra. <laughs> but no, I got a hundred rounds of regular stuff. And then I grabbed some of the, uh, cause at the other place that I went to get it, you can, it's, it's like, Two boxes per skew, right? Right, right. So I wanted the regular stuff, but I also bought two boxes of the little subsonic. Yeah. And I'm finding out fun. that's kind of fun for winged wing winged pests. Yeah. We're ne- gonna leave it at nemesis. that. <laughs> my nemesis and uh and so they can shoot those and I don't think my dog's gonna go quite as nuts. Yeah. Cause I got a big ass dog and it, you'll still hear it out of the barrel, but downrange, it doesn't give off a, you know, report. There you report go. So, well, the, the, the winged nemesis of me, of mine, yeah. they know when I breathe or they know when I think I'm going to open the door and right. they take off. They know your plan before you do. <laughs> they, they really do. <laughs> so I'm looking up here at the comments. Cause again, we are doing YouTube live and I'm sorry for the hiccup at first. Sometimes the audio doesn't, transfer over like it should but it looks like we're up and running now um we had a gentleman call me and he said i can hear you which is good that's what we asked if you hear the audio so thank you for responding and then he posted some comment i didn't understand and he but then he reposted that i meant he meant that we should ship him some ammo to north carolina yes well um sorry sorry <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of an ammo hoarder. It's what I do. It's essentially I have not had that many classes the last couple of weeks because of I've been signing a lot of people up for January, but I haven't had any actual lot of physical classes. I had one today, but um, for the last couple of weeks, and so I uh, I consider another part of my job going around <laughs> hitting up all the stores for ammo. In your line of work, it's definitely necessary. It is because I need more ammo. I can never have enough ammo. Well, I mean, I need lots of ammo. If people show up for a class that can't find ammo, yeah, then I'm gonna thumb. Then I'm gonna thumb my nose at him and say, "Ha ha ha! I have ammo." You know, (laughs) (laughs) that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So you couldn't find any ammo. Well, you didn't look hard enough. (laughs) So I took possession. Finally, I finally took possession of my VP nine twenty 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 twenty. You almost didn't. And because when I, as soon as I found out it was at the store, yes, I'm like, oh, well, this might be coming home with me. It's already paid for. It so. is already. It was already paid for. <laughs> but, uh, and you got to sit, you got to stand there and watch me fill out that yeah. Nix bag. I hate that thing. I had to watch you fill it out. And I, I hate to, that. I thing. had to open the gun box and look at it though. 
And you, but you know what? I still haven't shot it. And you want to know why? No plate. Because I ain't got a freaking adapter plate yep. for it. So I struggle. I struggled. Am I going to mill my slide? What am I going to do? I don't want to buy a new gun. They're freaking $700 because they are. They are, yeah. Uh, I guess I could buy one that was milled and all this crap going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, after talking with you, you kind of convinced me, just get one that's milled, right? That's what you right. do. You didn't tell me that's to, what but I that's what you do. Yeah. So that's what I did, right? <sighs> And now I can't now, find a freaking adapter plate. Exactly. Like nothing. People are like, you know, go get rid of that Burris fast fire. Let's just get some Gorilla Glue you and know. just <laughs> yeah. stick it on there. They're like, get rid of that Burris fast fire. Get a hole of sun. You can find a plate for a hole. I can't. All the popular plates mm -hmm. are no longer in existence. Nobody freaking has them. Yeah. I even looked to get one machined at a machine shop. And they said it was not going to be worth my while. It was going to cost way too much money. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I, I haven't gone red dot yet. I mean, I shot one you for should. the first time today, but once you go red dot, you'll never go <laughs> yes, back. Yeah, <laughs> so either that or your credits messed up. Yeah. <laughs> well, my credit. <laughs> so here's the thing is I've spent lots of money on a red dot, lots of money on a new gun. And, uh, the only thing keeping me from proceeding is a $25 plate. So if anyone knows where it's called a number five plate, it's made by uh, H and K, number five adapter plate for a Burris Fast Fire 3. I need it. I will pay for it. I will pay for it. Well, it depends on what you're asking. If you know where one is, I need it. Let me know. I need that plate. I'm getting irritated. I want to get this put on this gun. I'm going to find out where there's one, and then I'm going to hold it from you. I'll pay you $150 for it. <laughs> Actually, I won't. That's a lie. I'll pay you $100 for it. No. What if I bought it for $150? Then I'm going to laugh at you because you're going to have a plate. Oh. And well. you're going to have no VP maybe 9 can, 2020. Maybe we can like use it to 3D print one for you then. Ooh, scan. Oh, scan. That's not cool. That My phone came through. Oh, you still have Bluetooth. Yeah, Bluetooth is still on, so we will... Sorry about that. <laughs> dang it. Dang technology. That was uh, one, of those, one of those days. But now I'm, I'm off my... I'm a little off my game now, dude. So what was I talking about? That gun. I was talking about... The, the VP9. Guess yeah. what I got to shoot today? Ruger 5.7. Oh, yeah. And... and? I like it. Yeah, you do. I knew you would. I like it. I don't know that I've never shot the FM 5.7. I'm not sure that I'm a huge fan of the FM 5.7. Um, but I like the Ruger 5.7. It was a flat shooting gun. Mm -hmm. Really flat shooting gun. Yep. And uh, I'm going to shoot my lovely bride here. <laughs> a little text not to call me. Don't call I'm podcasting. This is super professional. This is yeah. why we have all the sponsors. <laughs> That's exactly why we have all the sponsors. Well, you got at least one. So. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and just, um, I think I'm just going to shut the Bluetooth off. All right. Okay, so, hey, they're, um, uh, I was thinking about something. Oh, Did okay. you see the article? Did you see that article? Um uh, that came out of Utah. I think it was to today. Um, I know. Um, yeah. So let me. Talking about the robberies, right? Yeah. So Alex sent me. Alex is a listener and he sent this to me. Um, it was in Utah, which is just down the road, a little ways from us. And the ATF is offering a a reward. A reward. A reward of $10,000. Because. For any information about Guns stolen in Utah. Yes. So what it was is there was three gun stores, right? Um, the rest of the, yes. That were burglarized. Yes, three three stores. Uh, Wasatch Guns in Layton, Cal Ranch in St. George, and Discount Firearms in Salt Lake. So that's <clears throat> crazy all in the same night. I mean, what are the... That's a little... Well, so St. George is pretty south Utah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but what... Maybe they were like uh, organized crime. Kind yeah, of thing? something. Yeah, kind of like Joe Biden, organized crime yeah, family. Yeah. We got us a gun thieving, <clears throat> a gun thieving triangle going on here, man. Yeah, that well, it might be. I mean, if they all kind of did it in the same, the same night. Um, the one in Layton, there were seventeen guns stolen. Cal Ranch in St. George, there was fifteen guns, and the one in Salt Lake was thirteen guns. And I'm curious to see if. 
like they where these kinda, guns kind of cased the place and picked out like yeah. the ones that you know. They, I'm, I don't know if they just grabbed any gun or if there were specific ones that they were. Yeah, we're not getting that information. Right. Not yet anyway. But it just yeah. seems kind of odd that in that state on the same night, there was three gun stores that were burglarized and, and there was a gun heist, man. That's pretty much I mean, what it equates to. Where are they taking them? What are they doing with them? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But if you do know, call the ATF. $10,000 in your pocket. Besides that, the ATF wants to talk to you right now. Yes, I'm sure they do. They want to talk to you right now. Yep. Why do they want to talk to us? What are they doing? They want to They want to talk all the bull crap that they're doing is what they want to do. They're trying to, they're coming after arm braces. Mm-hmm. They're coming after 80% lower kits, because, 80% yeah. kits. Yep. And because, who, who, man, heaven forbid you, you have an arm brace. Yes. Gosh, that's going to make that weapon so much more dangerous. So all they're doing, and I, I didn't get into reading the wording and stuff like that. I mean, I should, right? I've had, but I have people that read it and, and tell me kind of what's what's going on with it. But it's uh, it's really interesting to me because you know what they're essentially doing is they're they're creating a gun registration. That's all yeah. it is. It's a gun. It's a straight up gun mm-hmm. registration. And I, I kind of want to know what happened. I mean, so pistol. You know, the arm braces, they were legit for however many years. Right. What happened that made them all of a sudden, like, not legit? Okay, so you want to, let me, let me, let me tell you this. So I don't have, I don't have a, right now I don't have, I guess I always have a dog in this fight, right? Because I'm a firearm owner, but I don't have an actual dog dog in this fight, right? I don't right. have any of that stuff. But this is what I heard, and you tell me, we heard it through someone we both know. I heard it through someone we both know, and it makes sense. He wasn't trying to get out of it, but this is kind of what he was explaining. So now uh, I'm just going to preface this with excuse me if I make some kind of mistake here because I'm I'm not a, I'm not a, I've stated how many times I'm not a rifle guy. I don't I'm not into it. I don't build. I've never built one. I've bought one. It hasn't seen the light of day in many years, and there's I don't have anything against them or those who like them, but that's not me. So. The arm brace, the original arm brace that they're talking about, right, mm-hmm. came, and this is what he told me, was developed to to enable people with disabilities, right, to be able to 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 to, to shoot. Correct. Okay, I I guess that's I don't what know. that's what I'm told. And then once that was ATF approved that, and they went on with it, this could be totally wrong. I have no idea. Yeah, um, approved that and went with it. He said, then people actually started different companies. Actually, were like, oh yeah, just put an arm brace on it. Oh yeah, just right. put an arm brace on it. Just put an arm brace on it. And he says, over time, these arm braces. <laughs> he said these arm braces got down to the point where you can't even get an arm in there anymore. Right. It's just kind of evolved. And, it's just kind know, of evolved. There's a blade and there's different ones. And yeah. And so it's kind of like people have, have taken it and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but they have taken it and they just kind of run with it. Right. They've, they found the loophole. They right. found, I won't say loophole. That's a bad but word. They to twisted use. The, the words. They twisted bit. it yeah. to use. And now the ATF is coming after that. That's so, ridiculous. I mean, it is ridiculous. What, that I mean, doing a that. short we barrel have, rifle is not, any more dangerous than a regular rifle. right and we shouldn't have any kind of regulations but i'm just explaining kind of what i heard yeah. what i was I mean, told. based on the definitions of the nfa you know a pistol <laughs> is a, is one that can be fired with one hand right but look at all your modern ways of shooting everybody should be using two hands i mean right granted there's situations you probably wouldn't but so i've got i've got something oh shoot I uh, keep talking about it. <laughs> I think, I look I think what needs to happen, instead of the ATF coming after people and, and possibly turning people into criminals just by because they own something, um, maybe they need to ratify the NFA. Maybe they need to fix some of that stuff. And, you know, right. instead of just making everybody, you know, instantly uh, illegal, maybe they should change their policies and not, you know, what we have to abide by. Right. So... I really, I don't know. Uh, the ATF, I believe there is a place for them to some degree, to very small degree. But right now, this is ridiculous, the stuff they're going after. Um, right. And 80% lower is not a gun. Right. It's, it's a chunk of metal. So let me let me, let me me throw this out there. So this was, this was mentioned by 
by Matt, well, who we know is James or Magnum. We, we say Magnum. We call him Magnum. Um, he'll know who he is. He's, he, this is what he texted me, and he texted me this during our radio show. It says, this isn't about the brace. It is about the forced registration through the redefinition of guns, especially with handguns. He says the tax stamp will be required for defined assault weapons, and he says eventually they have left the definition open enough, things that you use with one hand and all that, to even eventually include things like the G-17 or G-45, yeah. stuff like that. So that is what we have to That is what we have to worry about. Oh, yeah, because you give them a little, they're going to take a lot. Yeah, so. and they're going to run with it. And that's all this is, is forced gun registration. They're, yep. they're compiling a list because, you know, Biden and his team, right, mm -hmm. his administration, uh, they – they're just prepping. They're getting ready. It's this. This reminds me of something, and I'll, it's kind of going off, but it's going to come right back. Um, we had a phone call the other day at work. Some lady, and I get it. Everybody's got their own opinion, but we have a big sign out front of our store. It says masks. You know, to mask up required because of the COVID thing. Right. So she calls and she says, "You have this big sign out there that says that, but you're not enforcing it at all." And I'm like. I, I basically wanted to tell her on the on the phone, well, why don't you come down here and you try to enforce it? Right. You know, there's no law that says you have to. Was she referring to me? No. I mean, <laughs> but I'm like, you know, try go ahead and try and enforce that. Right. That's the same thing that's going to happen with the ATF. Is they don't have enough people to enforce everywhere. Right. They just don't. And local law enforcement, I don't see, is going to enforce a lot of this stuff. Right. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. But another aspect of this, and you know, I've always got to jump on this aspect of it, always got to bring this up, is the is is uh, the GOA, the Gun Owners of America. While the NRA, why my favorite, why my favorite Second Amendment group, the NRA, is busy giving some poor child nerf guns mm -hmm. because santa told him he couldn't have a gun which wasn't right but i feel bad for the kid but still the nra is fighting this with everything they got and they're bringing that kid bags of nerf guns yeah while the nra is busy doing that we got the goa which is gun owners of america calling on president trump to fire the head of the atf yes i i wouldn't say just the head i'd say the whole upper to branch. fire now is it gonna last i don't know if he did that if it would last they just reinstate him afterwards if right. biden's in or whatever however that works out i mean we need we need the cajun cowboy here he could tell us more about that stuff but at least somebody is doing something and come on president trump come on donald trump do something for the Second Amendment. You haven't yeah. done anything to the Second Amendment. You mm -hmm. have allowed them to come after our, our, you know, take our bump stocks, piece of plastic. I know, but it was the whole, it was just the whole point of the deal, right? right. Um, that's all you've done. You have never, you haven't done anything to further the Second Amendment. I mean, you got to the point where. You know, people said, oh, yeah, he furthered the Second Amendment. He placed a bunch of Supreme Court justices in there on our side. You know what? They didn't even save him. No, they didn't. They didn't even save him. And now he's not doing anything. Come on, do this one thing for us. He's got even if a it, few days left. Even if it lasts. I don't know. <laughs> even if it lasts two or three weeks. I don't care. Get in there and fire people. Yeah. Shake them up. Say, this is screwed up and we're not going to take this anymore. I'm, it's Do what you can it's while anti you anti-American is what it is. It really it is. It definitely is. And any ATF agent that, that follows through with that, I mean. Oh, yeah. You call yourself an American? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's a job. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not right. No. I mean, I can understand criminals. You know, if you lose your rights, then that's one thing. But all you're going to be doing is hurting the law-abiding citizen who did nothing wrong. Yeah. So. It's, it's, anyhow, that's my rant against the NRA and against Trump right now. So, just so everyone's on the same page. <laughs> I'm ranting, I'm ranting. Yeah, I just want to clarify, I believe the NFA should be completely abolished, but, um. If, if that's not going to happen, then we need to I, ratify it. I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do, too. So. Their wording is so messed up in there. 
So do you got something you want to talk about for a minute? Because I got to make a phone call and I've got to get our guest on. And um, so I'm going to have to shut my microphone off. Okay. Are you good with that, dude? Yeah, I can do it. Are you good with that? Yeah, we covered some stuff. I just got to check it off just my list. Just keep rolling. Okay. Just keep checking it off your list. Keep talking. And okay. I am going to make a quick phone call. Okay. So we're going to dive into the uh, cheaper than dirt. Uh, is there's I believe it's Texas is filing lawsuit against cheaper than dirt, um, which a lot of us have got, gone on the internet and... Uh, you know, Midway USA, different different websites we buy stuff from, cheaper than dirt's usually one of them, which um, lately they haven't been that cheap, um, which is a lot of the lawsuits uh, claim is that they're price gouging um, things right now. And, um, you know, at our store, we did raise prices a little bit, um, but we had to because of factory, uh, like the – federal, you know, all the different firearms or uh, sorry, the ammo manufacturers, um, raise the prices. So we have to follow suit with that. Um, but we're not price gouging by any means. I mean, our, our ammo is still very, um, very reasonably priced. I think, um, little more than what I would prefer to pay obviously, but, um, there's certain places in town also that where we live that are, I believe, price gouging. Um, and I don't think it's right. Um, if it's legal or not, it's still not right. So, uh, <laughs> um, getting the sign to keep going here. Um, what else? Uh, primers, powder, all that stuff. Good luck finding it. Um, we're going to play something later on that's uh, a direct, it's a message basically from the CEO of uh, CCI and federal um, Remington spear, all those guys. Um, they're basically getting fed up with all the stuff. Um, and we got it. We got an audio clip that we can play for that. Um, it'll come on a little later, but for now, Oh, you want to play it now? Okay. Yeah, we'll play it right now. Okay, cool. Hi, I'm Jason Vanderbrink, president of Federal CCI, Spear, and Remington Ammunition. And I got to say, I am tired of all the hate mail. I'm tired of people showing up at our factories. I'm tired of reading the misinformation out on the internet right now about us not trying to service the demand that we're experiencing. It gets really old when I hear and read constantly that our ammunition companies are not making ammunition. We're having secret warehouses. We are selling to only specific customers. And after a year like right now, where we're, we have hired hundreds of employees to support American manufacturing jobs, all I hear is we're not making ammunition. So we want to keep the team motivated so we continue to make ammunition to try to service this market. But if we just look back on basic economics, seven million new shooters since March times two boxes, which is a conservative estimate, is 700 million new rounds of ammunition our three factories have to help produce. That is impossible to do in nine months. It takes months to train people. You actually got to train people to make ammunition. That takes time. You got to get the raw materials. And, and on top of that all, we're dealing with a pandemic and at all of our ammunition factories, the health and safety of our personnel and employees are number one. So tie all of that in together and you will see today that we are indeed making ammunition. We indeed are shipping ammunition. We're not storing it in secret warehouses. But I wanted to address those rumors because every day I hear something new and it's simply not true. Storing it in my warehouse. We're making all of the ammunition <laughs> as fast as we can. We really, really feel humbled that the demand is high for our products. And I ask, please squash the rumors. You don't have to believe everything that's out on the internet. We are doing our damnedest to meet this demand. We appreciate all of our support for American manufacturing jobs, and it really humbles our thousands of team members that you've chosen our brands to help you with your hobbies, self-defense, hunting. We feel humble, but again, 
please understand we are doing everything we can to meet this demand. And I say good on him. Yeah, good uh, on him. I'm glad they put that video out because ammo was so hard to find. And, you know, I've he- actually heard some of those rumors. And I, yeah. I, I obviously didn't buy into them except for the uh, storing ammo in a secret warehouse because uh, right. that's here. That's here. But I got good security <laughs> and you'll never find the ammo. <laughs> We store it below the war room. Never, never right, mind. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was good for him. So they are working hard, but there's just so many new gun owners. There's so many people demanding ammo right now. It's just absolutely I still, un- unbelievable. Uh, I still believe that if everybody would just stop for two weeks, and this goes with gas mm. prices, it goes with anything. Right. Everybody needs to you know, stop buying for two weeks. You watch those shelves get stocked right back up again. I can't stop when I won't stop. I know every, that's <laughs> everybody's mentality, but if, if it's amazing how, how fast it would come back. I can't, just stop. I can't stop when I won't stop. Hey, I want to throw this out there really quick here. Uh, we, we have a guest on the show this evening and we just kind of, we kind of crossed our, crossed our, our, our lines here, but I think we got him on there. Uh, I'm hoping I worked this board right. John, can you hear us? Yes, I can, sir. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Can you, you got him? Yeah, Is he coming in both ears or one? Just one, but that's cool. That's I weird. I wonder why that's happening. I can still hear it. Okay, well, just that's odd, but okay, we're just going to go with that because I'm not technical enough <laughs> to get this figured out. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh Mr. John, you are coming to us from behind enemy lines. Yes, I am. <laughs> enemy lines, man. That's that's uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, so where you don't have to say exactly where you're at, but uh, you oh, can. I don't. I don't care about that. I, I'm Rockland County, New York. So I'm uh, not too far north of uh, New York City. Right. Okay. So. Uh, uh, and you, um, you're a new gun owner. Is that it? Uh, yeah, I picked up my first gun in April of this year. Okay. And what caused you to want to do that? Um, honestly, it's, I, I've always liked guns. I, I've never had anything against them. I just never felt, I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, never felt the need to have one. Right. Um, until you just watched all this nut job crap that was going on with um, on the news with the you know riots and people uh, fighting over toilet paper and yeah yeah you know, and then we know what happened after all everything else went down when uh, Rodney or not the, uh, the other guy in Minneapolis mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it just went went south from there man it was just you know it was like one of those things I looked at life and I was just like you know what I think I really think we should have a gun in the house. Right. Yeah. That's, that's good. Um, that's, I, you know, I hear that. I have a lot of people, you know, when I do my classes, that's exactly their, that's their exact thinking is we've got to, you know, that's, they just, they watch the news, they see what's going on and they're like, it's uh, you know, I've thought about it maybe for a long time and, but I never saw the need for it necessarily. And now I'm thinking that this needs to be uh needs to be done. And so they get a gun and you've been doing some pretty serious training as well. Haven't you? Yeah. Well, it's funny uh, because before, when I decided that I was going to get the gun, uh, I went down to my local gun shop, uh, shoots and ladders, little local guy in town. Um, <clears throat> and he happened to have a shotgun down there that uh-huh. I took a look at. And, um, as soon as I figured out, you know, I kind of knew that the shotgun was what I was after. Um, cause the first time gun buyer, I guess a lot of people, when you go after your home defense uh, scenario, shotgun is like the first thing that I think a lot of people will look at. And that was the case for me. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, right away I started talking to him about like, you know, where can I go to get training? I'm like, everything's closed down right now. Um, and, you know, he gave me the name of a, a local instructor and um, <clears throat> I just hooked up with him and got my first class in May about a month after I got the shotgun and that was it. I was hooked. I Not only was I hooked on learning, I was also hooked on shooting. Right. I, you know, it was just a ton of fun. Um, and the group of people that I met blew away every, you know, stereotype that you might have of the gun community having never been there before. Right. 
it just it blew it away because everybody was so welcoming, everybody was so nice, everybody was so humble. There was no, there was no, you know, look at me kind of thing. It was all, you know, everybody just kind of took you in and they and they helped you out and they they walked you through and they watched what you did mm-hmm. and they gave you pointers and stuff. And it was uh, that was it, man. I was just then I just knew I just wanted to get a class. You know, one class a month is pretty much what I've been doing since. Yeah, we we deal with that a lot at the gun counter where. Uh, get the new, the new buyers and they're not sure what they're looking for. Um, they're not sure what to do. And, you know, I always tell them somebody, everybody's got to start somewhere. So that's, that's good. Had you ever, yeah. let me, had you ever, before you, you, you bought this, your first gun, a shotgun, or even decided just, have you, had you ever shot a gun before? Um, BB guns and a 22. Okay. Um, as a kid going through like a uh, 4-H camp. Gotcha. And I, I really like how you pointed out that, um, you know, the, the community of people that you met, the group of people that you around, they were very welcoming because I see that in my classes. I mean, we have people from all walks of life. Some people have been shooting a bunch. Some are brand new. Some of them may just be, you know, fresh off the boat. They just moved here from another, like a war torn country or something. And, and, and they may be very scared of firearms that they, they, they decided that this is for them and they want to try this, right? And I have never in the like eight years I've been doing this ever had any problem with anyone speaking down to someone else. Everyone they're just encouraging. They I mean, and I'm the instructor, right? But I mean I think the I mean I'm not I don't discourage people by any means, but I think the people in the class are probably more encouraging than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's phenomenal. I mean, someone makes a good shot and maybe they've never shot a handgun before and everyone cheers and claps and high fives gives them other. high five. Yeah. And it's just a wonderful community. I've never been a part of a community that has been like that before. And that's, that's always stood out to me too. And I'm, I'm glad you noticed that as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if you sit and watch like some of these uh, anti-gun groups and stuff, I mean, they make it sound like, and like on their Facebook pages, like uh, the trace, the Bloomberg thing, uh-huh. you'll see like the people who are anti-gun on those posts. They they automatically like they just have this assumption that everybody is a whack job that has a gun in their hands and they're just looking to go out and like shoot everything up. And I, I guess you can't help but like instill some of that as a preconceived idea of what the gun community might be about. Or you know you might run into a few of those guys when you start going to classes. So right. you know I, I know a bunch of people that. I've tried to get into taking classes now since I've gotten into it. And a few of them are still apprehensive, but, um, you know, I mean, you, you watch the first timers come in, you know, not that I'm that experienced at this point, but I've been to a bunch of the classes with this guy and I can see when somebody new comes in and I try and do for them what the other guys did for me. You know, I'll go up and say, hi, I'll introduce myself, ask them if it's their first class. And, you know, you just try and be as welcoming as you can be to, uh, to them because that's what I experienced. Right. It's really cool. Yeah, no, and that's awesome that you do that because I mean that's the that's the future of the Second Amendment right there, right? I mean, we have to yeah. be welcoming. We've got to bring people in. And just you know, just now with everything that's going on, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you probably heard that clip and it probably was too loud in your phone when I got you fired up here. But <laughs> they were talking about all the all the new gun owners, right? Um I mean and a lot of those gun owners they don't always, you know, lean right. Some of those are, 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 you know, they're Democrats. They're, they're liberals, There's right? A lot of them, though. and there are, and and they have just now realized that they have, you know, their new gun owners. They've realized that they've been lied to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, they've been lied to. It's not as easy to get a firearm as what you think, and and so I think that if they are going to move forward and they are going to come and they are going to learn right and learn how to defend themselves and learn how to you know stand up for the second amendment that they need people to be accepting and not oh you democrat what are you doing here you've tried to take our guns you've tried to this you tried to that we don't need to chase them off we need to be there and help them and educate them and 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 welcome them and i think that you're doing a great job of that and i uh, i applaud you for that i think that the gun community as a whole does does pretty pretty good at that and I think that if there are some of them that don't, I think they probably get weeded out really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah. I mean, there's like, uh, I, I haven't met anybody that kind of fits. I've met a few guys that are like, you know, they kind of have that little bit of a bravado thing going on, but they keep it in check. Um, right. 
at the classes. Um, but, you know, I mean, the other thing that, that really struck me is when I got into the gun community and I started talking to people and then more importantly is I started to look at being that I live in New York and we have the Cuomo's unsafe, we call it the unsafe act, but he calls it the safe act here. Right. Um, you know, and it, I never realized just how difficult it has become to obtain a firearm in New York and, and how limited what you can actually buy is here. You know, I mean, you guys can have all these really cool rifles and stuff out there in free America. But, you know, I mean, we, we actually have some cool stuff and I sent you a picture of my AR nine. Yes. It's got everything you guys have. Oh yeah. You know? It's slick. And it's, yeah, it's technically legal, but it's, you know, it's because it falls into that whole, um, you know, other loophole, I guess, whether it's a loophole or not. I, I call it a loophole, but because it's, I'm sure the government's going to try and close it. Oh, and they it's will. Everything going on. With, it's, yeah, it's one well, of the classifications. You can see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see what they're doing now with the pistol braces now. Yeah. Yep. So they're coming after those things with that. So, uh, where, you know, and I'm, and you just have to, you know, I'm not behind enemy lines and you, but you need to like move somewhere where you can be more free. I think. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, I know I do. <laughs> but let, let, let me, let me throw this out there. And, and, and you know, I, I may be ignorant to the whole fact, uh, you're talking to someone who doesn't like to leave his two acres, but <laughs> so, so, uh, in, <laughs> in New York, I mean, is it, how hard is it just to go out and, 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 sh- and shoot? I mean, is it, are there play, I mean, it's really hard. Yeah, uh, you know, I would yeah. imagine it's it's you got to be a member of a range, or there's not very many ranges. I mean, here here well, we can go out to a we can go out into the desert and we can just start shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, no, it's I mean here <clears throat> where I live in Rockland County, you can't discharge a firearm yeah. um, on anywhere. Um, I think in the county, unless you're on a range, and there's only like a. Uh, small hand, and they're all indoor that I know of right in Rockland County. Um, but if you get, once you start to get upstate, it's a lot more friendly. Um, and when I say upstate, I'm talking about like the, just the County above me. Right. Um, it gets a lot more friendly there because there's more open land. Um, so it, it's, if you have land and you can be 500 feet off a road and 500 feet away from a dwelling, you can discharge a firearm. If, you either own the property or you have the permission of the landowner right. to do so. I was cracking the door out of my uh, my master bedroom today, shooting at birds. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was laying. No, be, I was laying. None of that here. Well, I, I was laying prone on my upper deck <laughs> with the door cracked. I was laying on the carpet with the with the rifle snaking out, never snaking out of the door, trying to kill my winged nemesis friends. <laughs> but, <laughs> So that's what we do here. But you also have, have texted me and said that you um, you applied for a, a concealed carry permit. Did I read that correctly? I applied for what they call, I can't get a unrestricted one in New York State. I can get a what they call the sportsman okay. restriction, which means that I can carry concealed um, at a range if we go hiking on my property. Um, but that's pretty much it. Like I can't go downtown or I can't go out shopping and carry and carry the handgun with me. Right. And it's going to take me at least probably six months before that process is even played through. And I get in front of the judge and he tells me whether or not, you know, the state is going to let me wow. have wow. the right. That, and that's just for the limited version of that. That's for the limited version. Yeah. I, I talked to a cop buddy and I asked them, you know, when I fill this out, I said, should I just go for the, you know, the unrestricted and then let them knock it down? He goes, no, he goes, don't even bother. You won't even get it. Oh, um, I've heard you know, you, yeah. yeah. You have to basically like show them um, that you have a business and that you carry around a certain number or a certain amount of cash, like on a daily basis with bank deposits before you would even be considered Right. for possible approval of something like that. Wow. So what, uh, I mean, how, so obviously they, they don't obviously just want to, you know, give them out. We see that, right? But how much is this, like, you just fill out the application? I mean, do you have to, like, take a class? Do you have to go do training? I mean, how how prohibitive is it? I mean, how much money does it cost you? 
Well, at, 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 for, it's 150 bucks they take from you, uh, and that's that's not guaranteeing if you get if you don't get approved, they keep the 150. Oh, wow. oh sure they do, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but uh, as far as training goes, that's the other backwards thing in New York State is that if until you have the permit, or until Daddy says you can have permission to have a handgun <laughs> in New York State. You're not even allowed to have a pistol in your hand, so you can't get any training to see if it's even right for you. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. You're like, I could go into New Jersey and rent some time with a handgun. I would have to have somebody else in the stall with me. But in New York State, I can't do that. Um, like, I, I couldn't even go to a range and have a friend teach me it, you know unless he wanted to you know kind of do it on the sly and maybe risk getting in trouble if there happened to be an atf agent or something like that in the building that day um so yeah i mean it's just it's just backwards they, they make it as hard as they possibly can you know? so they, you, they just try and discourage you you can't even i mean obviously you can't you can't so once you get your permit that allows you that allows you to actually purchase a firearm is that what you're saying yes Yes, then I can purchase a firearm. But you can't and I can, go and figure out what you like, right? Well, I, I could go to a store right now, and you know, I mean, if I, I guess if I like, if I know the person at the shop, I could probably go and start handling one. But um, the technicality of actually like touching one, I don't know. I can't fire one. Right. That's so, crazy. and I can't get any training. So it's like you know. Wow. I, I suppose I could go and hold one in my hand and go, okay, well, you know, the SIG P320 feels good in my hand or the, you know, the Smith, the Smith and Wesson feels good in my hand. So I'll come back when I can actually try it. You know, and, and uh, you could do that, but yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't get training. You can't learn how it works. You can't get taught on it. Um, you know, so they, they want your money and then they want you to go through all the hoops. Um, you know, I mean, the whole process is crazy. I had to have four people that are not family members that are not related, uh, that I've known for two years or longer. And they have to live in my County, um, as character witnesses. Oh, wow. wow. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And then everybody in the house that lives in the same dwelling that is over the age, I'm going to say 18, but it could actually be lower than that. Um, but 18 for sure, I know, is, is would be it. You have to get notarized permission from every adult in the house. Oh, wow. That you can have, that they give you permission to have a permit for a pistol in the house. Oh, so, my gosh. So, I mean, think, think about that. So, if you have a big family and you've had, you know, say you've got a couple of brothers or, you know, you got you know, siblings live with you for some reason. And then you've also got kids. Now you have to go like march down to your local notary mm -hmm. with, you know, eight pieces of paper and mm -hmm. have everybody sign saying, yes, daddy can have permission to have a pistol in my house. <laughs> wow. wow. That's and, I, and then I suppose insane. if one of those people isn't okay with it, then you don't get it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Wow. They can screw you. They can screw you. Then it costs you more money because you got to try to bribe them. Then at that point, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, you have one hundred and fifty dollars cash for the permit. Well, you can come up with at least one hundred and fifty dollars." I, I knew it was bad there. I had no idea it was that. I bad feel bad for ever complaining about anything over here. Yeah, that is, if I want a gun, I just go buy one tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy, and you know when if um, I got arrested when I was uh, I don't know seventeen. Uh -huh. uh, stupid, something really stupid. Um, and, you know, like every teenager does in high school, a lot of us, you know, just do something dumb and you get cuffs put on you. Right. And it got dismissed, like probably most teenagers' charges get dismissed. But in the forms, it's like big, highlighted, bold letters that say, if your case was dismissed or your papers were sealed, you have to disclose that you were arrested. Wow. Along with the court papers. Even as a minor, because that's crazy. It, uh, even though it's a minor, even though it was dismissed or sealed or tossed out, if the cuffs ever went on you for any reason, you have to you have to declare that because oh my gosh. if you don't, 
it's grounds for automatic dismissal when they do the background check. Wow. So how soon before you move out of New York? <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> I'm about five years too late. Oh, oh. <laughs> dang it. So uh, what, ha- what handgun do you think that, uh, you know, if you get your permit, right. And you just, yep. you, it, what, what handgun are you thinking about? I'm actually currently leaning toward um, the SIG P320. Uh, and the reason being is that AR9 that I sent you the picture of that I got. Yes. That takes the SIG P320. Um, okay. I, cring- I cringed, but I see your reasoning now. And that's a good gun, I guess. It's a SIG, but it's a good <laughs> gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll look around. You know, I, I hear you talk about your VP9 a lot. I love it. I looked my, at that. And that love yeah, it. That's a pretty cool looking, pretty cool looking handgun. Mm-hmm. If you if you if you end up with a VP9, I'll point you in the direction of an awesome trigger for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I I had a 320. Um, I didn't mind it. I just I liked my other guns better. So yeah, but I mean, it wasn't like it was a bad gun. I just um just wasn't for me. So the only reason why I I, I cringe when someone says a sig is because a lot of my friends have sigs, and I just give them a hard time. That's pretty much. I got, I have literally have no good reason <laughs> just, <laughs> except, except for just to be a dev, devil's uh, advocate. So I got you. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh what's the ammo like over there? Is it hard to, I mean, hard to find right now? Like it is everywhere else yeah, or it, it's like everywhere else. No, it's, uh, yeah, we got, we got one or two local shops that will advertise that they've got like uh, a bucket mm-hmm. or a barrel of, uh, five five six comes in but they're selling it for like at five thousand rounds they're giving it to you for like 67 cents a round it's like oh, yeah. you can't do any better than that yeah, right <laughs> yeah. you're, you're buying in bulk at that point right um <clears throat> so yeah it's pretty bad um you know i mean where i where i got my rifles over in uh, westchester and i don't know how those guys do it but I do have to say that when I finally said that's it, I'm going out and getting a uh, an AR style uh, gun um, because I gave up. I what I was originally holding out for was the Ruger PCC. Um, yeah, because they made a nice New York compliant um, oh, right, yeah. version of it. So I figured, you know, I had the M lock up front, and it was it sounded like it was a pretty a pretty good gun as far as uh, shootability, accuracy, and all that. Um, and I like the breakdown factor of it yeah. too, the takedown that they had on there. I figured it would be something good, you know, easy to travel with. Um, but they just were not showing up anywhere. Um, like everything else and everybody was like empty here. There's no guns to be found. Um, and I went over to this place in Westchester and I don't know how they do it, but I walked in on a Saturday morning and they had at least 15 to 16 different models on the racks. And when you found what you wanted, you just put it back on the rack. They went in the back and got it for you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And I tell you, I, I suspect they're still the same way. I don't know how the guy does it. He's apparently got a shipping container in the back of his shop, and he just orders in bulk. Very uh, nice. And he must, be, he must be like a first call kind of mm-hmm. dude as far as the distributors are concerned. Yeah, definitely put on the allocation list. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I've been, you know, I keep my eyes open on the, uh, the local forums. Uh, there's a New York gun forum that I'm on. That is, uh, guys will sell some of the ammo that they've accumulated because they can make a little bit of profit, obviously, but they're selling it under what the current market value is. So for a guy like me, it's like, okay, I'll take it. I don't care <laughs> if you're going to sell it to me for 10 cents cheaper and I can get it from a store. I'll, I'll buy it. Oh yeah. Any day and all day. I mean, you, yeah. yeah, you know, there's we around here we have we have some places that just price gouge like crazy, and then we have like mm-hmm. one of the places like Mark uh, works at, which is they're just regular price. It's fantastic. No, they didn't change their prices, nothing like that. Now they limit you to a couple boxes, which I understand. Yeah, but I mean, it's still good prices, and it's uh, but you know those guys that are price gouging, they. They do it because people buy it. <laughs> they, yeah. I mean, yeah, people pay uh-huh. it and they sell out. And there's a guy, there's a guy in town here. And he will routinely get in uh, anywhere from fifteen to tw- like twenty thousand rounds, 
and the dude will he and he and we're talking high prices, high prices. He'll sell out in two hours, every yep. Yep. single time. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> crazy. It's yeah. I mean, that's the that's the one thing that I definitely picked up on pretty quickly is that there's a sense of panic, and I'm I'm glad I got the shotgun when I did because it would is as it turned out if I waited about a month or two there would have been no shotguns to have been had, at least none that I wanted. Right. You know, I yeah. either wanted the Remington or I wanted the Mossberg. I ended up with the Remington 870. Oh, hang on to yeah, that because you, you probably won't ever see them again. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I can't believe that company bankrupted themselves for, yeah. what, the second or third time? Got too big for their britches. <laughs> so yeah. is anyone in your, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to get too personal here. Is anyone in your, your household interested in shooting or, yeah. or doing that kind of stuff? We, yeah. Um, my girlfriend, she filled out her uh, permit for uh, the pistol at the same time with me. Oh, okay. very nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. She went, she's gone out and she, she won't shoot the shotgun because <laughs> uh, it makes it, she's nervous. Right. Um, right. She's small stature. So, and like, I, I can understand that. I mean, I, I told her, you know, if you just hold it right and you get the right stance, I'm like, it's going to kick, but it's not going to knock you over. Right. Just, you just got to be ready for it. And then once you do it the first time, it won't be so bad. You'll get used to it. But she, you know, she, I can understand. She doesn't want to shoot that, but she shot my rifle. Um, and she wasn't crazy about it, but she's going to go back and she's going to shoot it again. She's said that she will do that. Um, and she shot a handgun a few times as have I, right. But, you know, technically I haven't. Sure. No, I got if it. Anybody, if anybody's listening, Andrew Cuomo. Nobody listens to this. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do half this stuff on here correctly anyway, so nobody, nobody wants to listen. No, uh, so so uh, to your girlfriend that it's, uh, you know, just she just has to ease into it. Um, my, my kids, my uh, daughter, she was... 12 years old and she was on a, uh, her school's uh, trap and skeet, you know, team. And, uh, she shot, she would shoot routinely every, well, yeah, every week. And she shot it up at state, a full size, uh, 12 gauge, uh, uh, uh Benelli semi-auto or Beretta semi-auto. Right. And, um, she got to the point where that's all she preferred. She didn't want to shoot anything that was even cut down to fit her. She liked that big one. So, um, yeah, she'll get there. She just has to be around shooting probably a little bit more. And, and that's awesome though, that she's, you know, joined in with you a little bit there and she's not, you know, fighting with you. <laughs> no, I, no. Yeah. You. I mean, that was, that, yeah, that was the best, that was the best part. When I first mentioned it in April, I was kind of like, uh, here we go. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to win this one. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was kind of like, yeah, okay. That's cool. Because you know, she was watch she was watching what I was watching, and I mean, you know, I don't know if you guys got to see. I mean, New York obviously got hit very hard with that first wave of COVID, so it was oh, like yeah. you know, the sense of panic here was oh. amplified. I think as to what was around the country. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I saw I saw it on the news. That's yeah. uh, it's oh my gosh, it's just it. The country is just insane right now. It just has been all year, and stuff changes every hour, and it's just. Absolutely insane. I can't, I can't even imagine. Uh, I can't even imagine living over there. I mean, right. can you, Mark? No, I mean, it's that's very, it's very difficult. I, I think about when we sit here, yeah. me and Mark sit here and we talk about before the, even we turn the, the microphones on, we talk about all the problems around here. That's like nothing compared to over there. That's, <laughs> this is like absolutely not, I, I'm never going to complain again, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely hard to when you hear, how things are over there. I mean, I can't comprehend that. It's just because I've, I mean, I've grew up here in Idaho and it's, it's been like that the whole, my whole life. I mean, it's been, we've just been free to do whatever pretty much. Right. So that's totally yeah, well, weird I'm, to me to hear that stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not even just the guns. It's, you know, I mean, just the way they're, they're picking on small mom and pop businesses over here, yeah, you know, yeah. restaurants and places like that are just being, you know, and you can see these people on the news, their, their hearts are breaking they're they're yeah they're losing everything and you know Cuomo's just up there taking in his tax money and giving himself a $25,000 a year raise this January wow 
Man, that's just it's from all them hundred and fifty dollar pistol permit money that you never. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and people keep voting to to let them do that. I they mean, keep vote, just, they keep voting them in. I know. Yeah, that's, I that's just don't problem. understand that. That's well, crazy. if he gets reelected again after everything that he's done to the small business owners this time around, if, then then you know what? Then I'm out of here. Yeah, <laughs> ahead of schedule. <laughs> nice. Come see us in Idaho, man. We'll save a place for you over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's lots of room. So. There's lots of room. It's still, it's still it's still pretty cold there, though, isn't it? I hear you guys talking about your cold weather. It's cold right now. I it's mean, probably not any worse than what you, you what, know, like your what nor'easters you, or whatever. So it was fi- it was almost fifty degrees today. What? Oh, that's better than it was here then. Yeah. So I mean, how much snow you got? You guys got that? Did you get hit with that big storm? Uh, we got lucky right here. We only got about six inches, but anywhere north of me, like five, ten minutes, even it was like they got a foot. You got, got more. You, you got more than us. Yeah, we so, get we get that in the mountains, but we don't get that around here. So so yeah, we're, so right. we're in the high desert. We're now we're kind of in between the mountains, and we do get snow. We've had some bad winters, okay. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as far as cold, I mean, what's what? How hot does it get there in the summertime where you're at? We're going to convince you to summer, move here. We'll, well, we'll get um, on a, a hot summer day here would be like low 90s. Um, average would probably be 90 high, very high 80s. We're pretty close. We might have a couple weeks in the hundreds. Okay. Yeah, but it's a dry, it's, <laughs> it's a dry heat. It's, so dry. it's not humid. It's you a know. dry heat, they say. Yeah. yeah, it is. And so in the winter, how cold do you guys get there and how much snow do you typically get? We're going to convince you to move here. Typically, we haven't gotten much snow uh, for the last, like, 10 years. Yet. Um, we've had one or two bad winters. So when it, when it all averages out, I'd say, you know, we might get, like, three or four snowstorms a year in, around here. Um, you know, maybe 20 to 24 inches or so has been about the average. Holy cow. Um, but we've had some really brutally cold winters with that whole Arctic uh, blast that comes down from yeah. Canada. And that's, that's what gets me the most is the cold weather. You moving over here, it'd be like the tropics. Okay. Yeah. We don't get, I mean, <laughs> up in the mountains, we get the snow, but when's the last time we've had 24 inches of snow I, here? Even, total? even snowmageddon, like a few years back. Yeah, there's no way. We didn't even get that much. We get, well, we get it when the wind blows it and drifts it and piles it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's not as bad. I, you guys are making a sound. When I was listening to you and Cage Cowboy on that last one, talking about training outside and, it just—it was mean, cold. It that sounded day. like it was really okay. So it was just like a weird day for you guys. Then. Yeah, well, uh, with the wind chill, cold. you know, it, get, it gets cold. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's not—it's not like yeah. I we, think we do have a lot of wind. We, I think, would be better than where you're at weather-wise. But the worst case scenario, we wouldn't be any we were worse. Better today. Oh yeah, we were better we were today. Today, <laughs> we woke up and it was about two degrees here this morning. Wow. And you want to know the cool thing yeah. if, about Idaho is if all you got to do is have a dry, Idaho driver's license and you're good to buy a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's America. And you yeah. don't need a permit to carry concealed in this state. And there's that's, a lot less, there's a lot less people. Yeah. And that's, you, that's still America. Yeah. I yeah. Can, I can live like that. When you're ready, people is good too. When you're ready, you at least got to, you got to, you got to swing by and visit. Yeah, oh hell yeah, man. So that'll be that would be fun. So well, um I had some other questions for you and I can't remember what they were, of course. I'm very prepared. Sorry I got you on here so late. We meant to have you on from the get go to hear our Christmas music and stuff, but <laughs> Oh, that's all right. You know what? Honestly, I I totally spaced because I was working today until about five o'clock and then I just looked down at my phone I'm like, Holy crap. <laughs> I saw you. I saw your text. My alarm went off, but it was it was set to solid, so I never even like got notified. Oh, uh, so I'm yeah. glad I looked down and saw your text. Not a not a problem. Not a problem. So, hey, real quick, how did your car? You went to a carving class last weekend, correct? Yes. How'd that go? Yes, that was a lot of fun. That was um, that was my second carving class. Um, but it was carving two. Okay. So we um, we actually got into a lot of movement drills. Uh, we're using some of the, the barriers. Uh, we did some teamwork, two guys on a barrier, each taking a side. Um, that, that, that was a blast. That was really a lot of fun. A lot of fun. How much, how many, how much ammo did you go through in that class? 
Uh, we probably went through about 400 rounds each for nice. the day, nice. which was um, about probably about a hundred under where he would have been before the whole ammo shortage thing. Right. You know, he's kind of been hitting some people. Um, you know, he's trying to he's trying to trim it down now. You know, so where he used to say you know he wanted five rounds on target. Um, you know, with two to the chest. Uh, you know, three to the chest, one to the head, or something like that. Whatever whatever you were doing. Uh, now he's, he he kind of gives you the option. He goes, you know, you can give me two or three if you're ammo um, deficient for the day. So, right. But I had enough, so you know, and I was just looking to shoot, so I shot. Has any has <laughs> any of your you know? I'm sure you're around people over there that that really don't. I mean, not necessarily in the class, but just people that you're around that don't necessarily like firearms and aren't into guns. Has any of them questioned you or given you some crazy look or even chastised no. you? No. No, no. As a matter of fact, I've, I've come to find out that more of the people that I actually have talked to on a daily basis are actually into guns. And it's just like something you keep quiet around here. Oh, oh gotcha. You, you, you don't go out, you know, spouting off that you are into guns around here because, you know, you never know when somebody's going to come knocking on your door looking That's for true. what That's true. you've got in New York State. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, yeah. So I found out, like, my neighbor right behind me, he's, I kind of knew he had guns, but I didn't realize that he was in, as into him as he is. Um, you know, so that was really cool. And they were actually our first two signatures um, oh. on our paperwork. Yeah. So that that was great. And that got the ball rolling. And then, um, you know, the other people I talked to, uh, one other person, my other neighbor, come to find out that she's been considering getting a permit the whole time. I'm oh, like, wow. do it. I'm like, do it. We'll, we'll sign. I said, I, I will tell you everything I've learned up to this point. I said, but just go do it. Um, and, and and that's the way it's been. I've been finding out more and more people are into it and support it. Um, you know, and that's that, that goes to, you know, I was going to start saying before, but the other thing that um, getting into the community around here has awoken me to is, you know, um, just how passionate a lot of the people are around here about their rights and about how restricted, you know, Cuomo and the, go- and the local governments are trying to make it as far as, you know, making it as difficult as they possibly can. Uh, it, it, they might not be able to strip away your rights, but they put up so many roadblocks that a lot of people just go, Oh God, they, they, they make you, they make you, yeah, they make you give up. Yeah, exactly. Huh. But it, no, there's, there's a lot of people that support it. And I think there's a lot of people that were the way I was prior to getting my weapon, which is that I just, I never had a problem with it. I always knew it was your right. I never thought it should be restricted, but I just mm-hmm. never practiced, you know, or, or wanted to exercise my rights until this yeah. year. Um, you know, so I think, you know, it's it's surprising when you look at New York State. You know, everybody automatically you think New York City, which is very liberal, very um, left, very democratic, and that's not always necessarily a bad thing. But very anti-gun, right? Very anti-gun down there. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of those politics, unfortunately, run the state. So you just kind of think that New York State is very anti-gun, but it's when you get up into like my counties where it starts and then everything north of me, it's like totally different world. It's, you know, it's like probably a lot like what you guys experience. It's just, we can't be as open about it. We have limitations on some things that we can have legally. That's a, uh... My wife has always wanted to go <laughs> visit New York, and I just keep shaking my head going, I like it here on my two That's acres. Okay. Vis- visiting is, is fine. You can visit. Just don't move here. Yo, I'll move. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. Uh, un- unfortunately, New York State will not recognize any other state's right to carry. Right. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the opposite is, True. When we leave New York, I think there's something about 32 or 36 states that will recognize New York's permit. But New York will not recognize any single state's permit if you come into New York State. Uh, you can come to Idaho 
and you don't even have to have a permit. You can come into Idaho, and as long as you can legally own that firearm, you can conceal mm. carry without a permit while you're visiting this fine state. Yeah, there's a lot of nice states like that. I'm definitely <laughs> going to have to. When I leave here, I've told people, I said that there's a couple of stipulations, um, taxes being one, property being another, you know, I have enough property that we don't have any neighbors that we can directly see. Mm -hmm. And I said, the main stipulation for me, though, over the last year or two has become, I am not moving anywhere where there is a noticeable population of ex-New Yorkers. Oh. Because they just, they bring their politics with them. Unfortunately. I, think I've met, you, I think I've met one. So yeah, if, well, then Idaho would be a great place for me because I would go there, and my my goal is to move there and to just blend in, just be a chameleon. You, and I I am I I what do you guys call yourselves? Idahoans. Idahoans. Yeah, Idahoans. Yep. Okay. Well, I that I would be an Idahoan. <laughs> so here's the thing: you got to worry. It's, which we're we got our so we're good, but and you said you don't want to go where there's any ex New Yorkers. We have Californians. <laughs> well, they're even worse. <laughs> they, they're they're trying. They're trying yeah. their darndest yeah. to so, do. So far, I haven't met very many that are bringing their politics with them, though. Yeah, a lot of them are really yeah. good, and they come up here and they take my classes and they want to get their firearms, and, and so that's a, it's kind of a it's kind of a good deal, yeah. but. Well, I, sh I really appreciate. It's probably I don't even know what time it is there. It's probably late. Who knows? Um, no, it don't matter. Uh, I I really though I appreciate you actually listening to the podcast, finding our podcast. It's it's yeah, awesome. no, I I started searching for um gum podcast, and yours was uh, yours was one of the ones that popped up, and um, I think for a little stretch there, you weren't really putting anything out, and then like the last several months, I've been catching. I'm like, okay, it's on the rotation now, and uh, yeah, with that last one that you uh, put up and put out a feeler for people that just kind of contact you if they were into shooting or new or something. I was like, Oh, let me just send off. Yeah. Works. Know my story. We like to talk to people and there's not very many people that get a hold of us. So we really appreciate it. I blame Mark. Yep. I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, it's yeah. Mark's the reason. <laughs> so, but, um, I think unless you got anything else you want to throw out there, I mean, I think we're, I think we're good. I just wanted to thank you for joining us. Uh, I do appreciate that. And you've got my number and you can continually text message me, ask me questions or whatever. We'll probably, if you've, you've come on here once now, we'll probably get you back on again sometime if you're, if you're game for that. Oh, hell yeah. Well, I'll probably have a good story to tell you in January because my course for January is going to be a force on force class. Oh, oh, that's fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that... my, the instru I, I was hesitant about taking it, uh, but the instructor who has come to know me now, um, he said, do you trust me? I said, of course I do. He goes, come, you'll be fine. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good adrenaline rush. Yeah. I, yeah, I enjoy doing I that stuff. It's, it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. I know that one's going to, I'm going to have jitters that night, like getting into, you know, the pre talk that we do before mm -hmm. every class. I'm sure I'm going to be like all antsy and oh, yeah. amped up for that one. <laughs> Well, that's cool. I look for, we'll, we'll have you back on for sure. And you'll have to give us a breakdown on that and, and yeah. uh, send some pictures or do something. That'd be, that'd be awesome. I'd love, I'd love to hear that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure you can tell me what it's like to be shot, right? Cause I know you get shot by your students a lot with this. Uh, yeah, classes. I have been shot. <laughs> yes, I have been shot and it's, that's super fun. In fact, I signed up a whole bunch of ladies for a class <laughs> and uh that, i think that's why most of them signed up is because they knew that they were going to get to shoot me with the sims rounds but uh mark doesn't realize he's going to come help me and he's going to get shot I, I at already too. volunteered for that's that, right so. mark's going to get shot at too so, <laughs> so it'll i'm be, used to it so it'll be it'll be fun uh but no uh, we appreciate having you on and uh keep in touch and we'll get you on uh in january but cool. uh, what? thank you for having me, man. Oh, it was, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. And I, I'll catch you later. Thank you very much, John. All right. Thanks, Bob. Okay, Take care, you. Mark. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, that was John from Behind Enemy Lines up in New York. And he was on here and he was chatting with us, telling us what it's like to try it to be a firearm owner and a second yeah. amendment advocate and that was absolutely insane i had no idea 
I mean, I thought I knew how it was there. I yeah. have no idea. That is, oh my gosh. Me, yeah. I mean, that was crazy. I, I feel so much freer having <laughs> I, heard that. I complained so much about <laughs> Idaho. I'm done complaining, man. I am done complaining. I mean, so so this is this is what is awesome about John. So, and I was just thinking about this because it's the time of year I start planning my next year. And I know this podcast is going a little bit long, but I want to throw this out there because something I've been thinking about for the last week or so. Um, you know, I, I instruct, right? I, I have people, lots of people. I get busy instructing. My weekends get full. Everything gets full. And frankly, I don't go out and, I mean, I shoot here, right? But I don't go and take other training classes like I should. I used to do a lot more. But it's been a while since I've done that. And I've, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to go get USCCA certified probably in February and do some different stuff like that. And I was telling my wife, I was like, I go and I run all these races. I think maybe I need to pull back from that. Still run and train and that kind of stuff because that's important to me. But I need to maybe go and yeah, I'm willing to pay the money to go run these races. I probably should take the same amount of money because it's not going to cost but the same and go and do some more training classes mm-hmm. and, and actually do some more stuff. And, and kudos to John, right? He's somewhere where it seems like it's, uh, pretty almost like a non-permissive environment for the most part, right? Yeah. But he has went and he's got what he can get. He's he's got his shotgun. He's got his nine mil carbine rifle, and he goes and he takes a class every month, every single month. Just the fact that he's doing what he can, yeah, that just shows he's not backing down. He's no. not. He's not giving up. And can you imagine the type of stuff he'd do if he lived in a state where he could actually go and do that more? Oh yeah. I mean, he'd ha- I'd probably have you know, a hundred times more fun with it. Oh, so much more. And it's just, it's just, so that is a good example. I mean, I have people that take classes from me and they shoot in class and that's it. They'll never pick up the firearm. Train people. You need to right. train. You need to get out. You need to shoot. You need mm-hmm. to do all kinds of stuff. It's, you got to uh, well, keep you growing me, your knowledge base. You saw me tonight. I, I, it's been a while since I've shot and I, yeah. I was jittery as heck. I mean, I was just, I couldn't hold steady. Oh yeah. So it, time to get out. Sh- time to get out and shoot. Time yeah. to get out and do something. So, um, but hey, thanks again. I know he's probably going to re-listen to this, but thanks again, John, for coming on. Um, and for any other listeners we have, uh, thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for putting up with me and and messing up YouTube live and <laughs> always having to restart stuff and and possibly the audio may not sound that great. I really do appreciate the listeners. Um, and everyone that has supported the Patriot Defense Us and the Patriot Defense Podcast and me and all my classes as well. Um, and me, you know, I've been doing this business now. I've been doing this full time for a year now. I st- part time for about the last seven or eight years, full time for a year now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to continue with it as long, as long as I can and as long as I keep uh, receiving support. And I look forward to the next year. But if you got any questions or comments or if you want to get on the podcast, you can call me. You can text me area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. Uh, six two two three, and just say, hey, look, I listen. To, say I listen to the podcast. I'd love to tell my story. You have a question? You just want to ask that? You want to leave a message for me to read on the podcast? I will do that as well. Uh, some days I do have my crap together. Some days <laughs> not so much. But obviously, listening to John, he said he went. There was a little area there where we weren't doing a podcast very much. He must have been busy or something. I don't remember, but. We need to try and do these every week like we are. It's winter time. That's the best time to. Best, yeah, we seem to get together better during the winter. In the winter time. So, once again, thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Share this on your social media page. Give a give your family the gift of Patriot Defense for Christmas. That's the best thing that you can give them. That's a good. That's a good gift. That, that's a that, gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Right next to baby Jesus. That is the next best. Never mind. <laughs> okay. That's pushing. <laughs> that's pushing. Until then, I will. I'll see you guys uh, next weekend. Uh, yeah, next weekend for sure. And uh, I may pop in before then. Just keep an eye on your devices. Yes, sir. Did One I forget? One quick thing. It yes. is the holidays. Yes. Uh, no drinking and driving. Especially don't drink and carry. Yeah, don't drink and carry. So if you're going to have a lovely beverage with your family, with your friends, uh, put the firearm away, unload it, lock it up in the safe. Uh, Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and carry your firearm because that'll get you in trouble every single time. But until then, I think we're out of here. I will see you next weekend, and thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.